Okay, so in today's video we're going to have a look at compound interest. Uh, so grab a piece of paper, grab a pen, make some notes because we're going to be able to look at a few different types of questions here. Now I'm going to start off just by saying we are going to be only looking at calculator methods here. So this is going to be a purely a calculator based method of looking at compound interest. Okay, So grab your calculator as well because we're going to be having a, have a little go playing with some of the buttons on there. So it says in this first question, James invests £4,000 for three years in a savings account and he was paid 2.4% compound interest per annum. How much did James have in his savings account after three years? Okay, so first thing we need to have a think about here is the fact of what compound interest actually means. So compound interest, this word here, means that the interest he earns in his first year then goes towards the amount of interest he can then earn in, in each subsequent year. So after he earns this 2.4%, let's just imagine that's £50. In the second year he'll earn interest on £4,050. Okay, so his interest keeps getting better and better. And this is such an important topic, this is obviously uh, very closely related to the how you earn money in real life and how and how compound interest works. So I actually think this is probably one of the most important topics that you learn at GCSE Maths and it's one that I actually really, really enjoy teaching. So we're going to have a look at this question how we approach it. Now first of all, we are obviously going to look at calculator methods as I said and this 2.4% is very, very important here because we need to know how to write that as a percentage. Now straight away, just as a, percent, as a, uh, sorry, as a decimal, and if we want to write 2.4% as a decimal, it's obviously going to be 0 point and then for two percent it would be zero two zero two and then for that extra point four of a percent although there's a decimal in the percentage we don't introduce another decimal within our decimal so it's just an extra four on the end there and that is the decimal version of 2.4 percent 0.024 it's very rare that you'd ever get a double digit rate of interest so it's pretty much always 0.0 something okay so just always remember that because if you put 0.24 that's 24 percent and it's very rare that you're ever going to get 24 percent interest anywhere if you do let me know but 0.024 is our decimal version of this. Now in order to actually increase by an amount, instead of putting a zero here, so instead of having this zero at the start, we can change that for a one. The reason being, if you times something by one, it obviously just becomes itself, 4,000 times one is 4,000, but if you times it by 1.024, add on that extra 2.4% as a decimal, it'll actually increase it for you. And you can try that on your calculator. If you do 4,000, let's write it down, and you multiply that by 1.024, it'll add on 2.4% for you. So I'm going to do this on my calculator now. 4,000 times 1.024 equals £4,096. So that's an extra £96. Now if you just do 4,000 and you times it by 0.024, you'll see that you get £96. Okay, so you can try that out. Four thousand times 0 0.024, you'll get ninety-six pounds. So, adding the one in there instead adds it on for us. It does that job for us, rather than having to write it down and add it on. You straight away get four thousand and ninety-six. Now that's great if it's one year, but this says three years. So what I actually want to do is I want to times by one point zero two four. I want to get my answer. Times it by one point zero two four again get my answer and times it by 1.024 again. And you can do that, you can type it in three times. If I do it now, times another 1.024, and then times another 1.024, we end up with a final amount of 4,294 pounds and 97p when we round it up to the nearest penny. Now, rather than actually wasting all that time, because I do want to teach you the fastest way here, to make your calculator times it by itself three times we can just put a little power of three there. So however many years it is in the question, in this case it was three years, we can just put a little power of three there. And that actually does it for us. So if you get ahead, go ahead and type that in, 4,000 times 1.024 power of three, press equals, and you get the answer, 4,294 pounds, and it's 967, but we'll round it to the nearest penny, 97p. Okay, you could actually make an argument that it'd be 96p. It's often the case that banks won't round it up for you. So you could make the argument it's 96 or 97p. But following the normal mathematical rules of rounding, we'll round it to 97p. Okay, so obviously just writing your final answer with your pound sign, you've got £4,294 and 97p. And that's what's in the bank there after the three years. Okay, so we take our starting amount, we multiply it there by our multiplier, not forgetting to add the one in. So 1.024 will add on 2.4%. And our little power there is the amount of years or the amount of times we want to times by 1.024. Okay, let's have a look at another question. 
Okay, so the next question. Alice invests £2,500 for two years in a savings account. She was paid 1.8% compound interest per annum. How much interest does Alice earn over the two years? So it's a slightly different question because it says how much interest. And you've got to be careful of the wording here because the word interest represents the amount of money extra that you're getting. So if I put in £2,500 and at the end of two years I have £2,600, I would have earned £100 in interest, okay, the amount that the bank had given me for leaving my money there. So it's got to be careful with the language in the question this isn't asking me how much money i have in the bank but instead how much is that extra bit that the bank's giving me so first things first let's have a look at this 1.8 percent now 1.8 percent as a decimal is 0.018 okay and not forgetting obviously we want to put the one put the one in front of that instead of that zero there to make sure that we actually do increase otherwise it's going to go down okay so you'll know if you've done it wrong there because the amount of money will go down and obviously when we're putting money in the bank we're expecting it to go up so We'll start off with 2,500, and we're just going to times that by 1.018, and this time it's two years, so we're going to put a power of two. Okay, obviously with two years, it's not it's not really too much of a stress for you to just type it in twice, but it's good just getting into the habit of just typing in the power. So 1.018 power of two, and let's see what that equals. That equals, and we don't have to round the pennies this time. We get 2,000. Five hundred and ninety pounds and eighty-one pence. There we go. And there's our final answer. Obviously, you can put your pound sign at the start there. Okay. So that's what we do for two years. Obviously, you just need to know where your power buttons are on your calculator. A lot of calculators have a normal power button for for squared. It normally is a little button with an x squared in. Okay. Looks like this. Or you will have another button that has an x with a little blank box next to it and that just allows you to put any power in there but obviously check out your own calculator have a look at where your power button is and make sure that you can do that some buttons actually some calculators sorry actually have this little button as well like a little arrow pointing up and that represents the power as well so just make sure you're happy with what your power button is and how to use it let's have a look at one more question before you have a go Okay, so Frank invests £8,000 for three years in a savings account. He's paid 2.4% compound interest in the first year and 0.5% compound interest per annum for each year after. And that word per annum again just means per year. How much did Frank have in his savings account after three years? Now for this one here, we're going to have to take it in two steps because in the first year we get 2.4%. So we can work out how much he gets in the first year and then we'll have a look at this 0.5% following that. So in the first year, and I'm going to label this, uh, year, I'm just going to put year one. So in the first year, he gets eight thousand, and we're going to multiply that by the multiply for two point four percent, so one point naught two four. And we're not going to put any power with that because it's only in the first year. You could put the power of one. But I'm just going to work that out there. So eight thousand times one point zero two four, no powers involved, and that equals eight thousand one hundred and ninety two pounds. So at the start of year two is what we're looking at year two he now has 8192 okay so that's the amount that he's starting with in the second year now for the next two years because it does say obviously this is three years in total so we've already done the first year so we've now got two years at 0.5 percent so don't forget that's only going to be two years and not the three he's going to get 0.5 percent so we just have to figure out how we're going to write that as a decimal so 0.5 percent well 1.0 is what we always put there's not even a whole percentage so it's another naught and then for that half a percent, like the four above, we've got the five at the end there. So you've got to be very careful that you don't accidentally put 1.05 when it's a naught point something percentage. Okay, we've got one point naught naught, and then that five represents the half a percent. Now it's two years at that rate, so that one there, we are going to put a power of two to make sure we get the two years there, and we'll see what we get. So 8,192 multiplied by 1.005 to the power of two. And that gives us an, our, our result here. So we have £8,274. And to the nearest penny, it's 12p. There we go, £8,274, 12p. It doesn't say how much interest does he earn. It says how much does he have. So that's our final answer there, £8,274 and 12p. Right, okay, here's two for you to have a go at. Okay, so pause the video there. Two questions, and we'll go over the answers in a sec. Okay, so... Leah invests 4,500 for three years. She's paid 2.6%. How much does she have in her savings account at the end of those three years? Well, that's a nice easy one for us to do. 4,500 multiplied by 1.026 for three years, so the power of three. 
and let's type that in 4500 times 1.026 power of 3 and we get let's write it in properly 4860 pounds and 21p there you go, you could get away with 20p there as well, but following rules around it, it's a five after the zero. So 4,860 pounds and 21p. On to the next one, we've got 6,000 pounds, three years, 3.4% in the first year, and 0.8% for each year after. How much interest does he earn? There we go, so let's just highlight that, how much interest. Don't wanna to forget to write that in the final step there. So 6,000. In the first year, we're going to multiply it by 1.034. So after the first year, he's going to have, let's have a look, 1.034, £6,204. There we go, 6,204. In the second year, then, we're starting off with 6,204. And we're going to multiply that by 1.008 for the 0.8%. And that's for another two years, so we'll put a power of two with that. And let's work that out. So times 1.008 to the power of 2, and that equals £6,303.66. And there we go. And that's how much he has in his bank at the end of the three years. Now, the question does say how much interest does he earn. So if we take away 6000 from that, the original amount, or we can probably just see how much extra it is, because it's that extra £303.66. But on your calculator, you can do the final amount there, 6000 Three hundred and three pounds and sixty-six pence, and subtract the six thousand, and that leaves you with three hundred and three pounds and sixty-six pounds in interest. And there's your final answer. Okay, let's start have a look at something else. Right, okay, so Michael invested £5,000 for N years in a savings account. He's paid 3.2% per annum compound interest. At the end of N years, he has this much, £5,852.86p. Work out the value of N. Now, there are two different ways of doing this. There's one way that I think is very, right, relatively nice and simple. Uh, there is quite a mathematical way that we can do, and I'll quickly discuss it, although it's not one that you actually need to know at GCSE, but not, not in the saying that you couldn't use it. But I'll just show you a really nice, easy way to do this. So we know we're starting off with 5,000. We know that whatever happens with the amount of years, we're gonna to have to times that by, for this percentage, 3.2%, 1.032. We just don't know what power we're gonna put with it. So I mean, just guess some numbers on the calculator. Let's type it in, 5,000 times 1.032 to the power of, let's have a look, let's just go with four. So if I go with the power of four, what do I get? I get this answer here, 5,671 pounds and 38p. Okay, so not actually enough there, but we could carry on, we could go again. So if we need to go higher, because we need to get 5,852 pounds and 86p. So we've got a little bit more, so let's try again. Let's do 5,000 and let's times it by 1.032. And let's go with the power of five this time. So you're back into your calculator, change it for a five. And there we go, we get 5,852 pounds and 86p to the nearest penny. There we go, and that matches. So our final answer there would be five years. There we go, so quite nice and simple. I actually don't think that there's any other easier way of doing that, I think that's probably the easiest way. Maybe a little bit more time consuming than, than, a, than another particular way we could approach, but I think that's a nice easy way. You just go higher with the amount of years if you need to go higher or lower if you need to go lower. Now there is another way of doing it, you can actually use uh, logs for this, you can use logarithms, something that you look at in A level, but I'm actually, I, I might discuss that in a separate video um, as a little bit of a different different way of approaching it, but I think this is the, probably the easiest way to go about it, just guessing the numbers higher or lower and using a bit of trial and error. But let's have a look at a different thing, because in that the years was taken away, and if we take away the percentage, that is a little bit trickier, so we'll have a look at that one as well. Okay, so Ava invested £8,000 for three years in a savings account. She was paid X percent per annum in compound interest, and at the end of three years, she had £8,589.93p. and Work out the value of X. So if we take the same approach here, trying to write down what we know, we've got £8,000. We're going to multiply that by X percent, which we don't know what it is, so let's just put X in there. It's going to be to the power of three, and it's going to give us the answer eight thousand five hundred and eighty nine pounds and ninety three pence 
Now again, we could just guess numbers, remembering it's going to be a one point something number. So you could just guess numbers like 1.02 and see what you get. You could put, just put that in, that'd be 2%. Okay, remembering obviously the percentage is in that one point number like we've been doing in the previous questions. Um, but if we actually just type that in, let's see what we get. We get 8,000 times 1.02 to the power of 3. And we get £8,489.66. Now obviously that's not high enough, so we'd have to go higher again. So maybe we could try 1.03. Try 1.03, which would be 3%. So have a look, go back into the calculator and change that. 1.03, we get £8,741.81. So it's somewhere in between 2 and 3%, and it won't be take you too long to actually try these out. But obviously that is quite a time-consuming method, just typing in different uh, little decimals there. So you could try 1.025 and, and then go higher or lower again. But there's actually a simpler way of doing this, and it's just about rearranging this little equation that we've got written here. So if I want to have x cubed on its own, bearing in mind it's 8,000 times x cubed, I could divide both sides by 8,000. So if I divide both sides by 8,000, that will give me x cubed on its own. So divide both sides by 8,000, and we get x cubed equals, and let's actually go about doing that, 8589.93, and we get 8,000, sorry, I've not actually typed the divide in, divided by 8,000, and we get one point, let's have a look, let's write this down. X cubed is 1.0737. What else we got? 4125. There you go. So X cubed equaled this number here. Now if I want to find out what X is, I can just do a cube root, because to find out what the uh, what X is there, if X has been cubed, if we do the cube root, that'll tell us what X is. So if I cube root both sides, let's cube root that. And we get x equals, and you have to be able to find your cube root button. Normally it's behind the square root button, so I'm going to press shift and then my square root button, and it brings up my cube root. So obviously just make sure that you can figure out where that is. And then I'm just going to press the answer button, or you could type that number in there. But if I press equals, and let's have a look what we get. We get 1.023999818. There we go. Now, the, obviously the percentage here that the person's got is not gonna be all these little decimals here, okay? So obviously because the amount of money at this point here with the 93p has been rounded to the nearest penny, which it probably wasn't bang on, okay? That, that's gonna affect this decimal down here. So we're gonna have a look at what it is to the nearest uh, few decimal places. So we know that this two here represents 2%. So we know we've definitely got 2% there. There we go. After that, it's going to be two point something percent. Now, it's not it's not going to be that three there because afterwards it's nine nine nine. So it's very very likely that that three was actually just a four, and it's most likely that that was going to be two point four percent. There we go. Obviously, we don't know exactly because obviously we don't know what it was rounded to, but it's very very likely there that it was two point four percent. Okay, so we're just getting it to that nearest little uh, point decimal point uh, single decimal of a percentage there, two point four percent. So I'd give my final answer there, and I'd, I'd say it was two point four percent. There we go. Obviously, you just need to remember that obviously in those previous questions, we, we found the 2%, we found the 3% by adding it onto the 1, so it was 1.03 up here, or 1.02 in the previous questions. So that 1.023999 is that 2.4% hidden within there. Okay, and that's how we find one of those. Obviously, you could have, at the starting point, though, when I typed in these 1.02s, 1.03s, you could have just tested it out. I think if we'd have tried out 1.025, then it would have been just slightly too high. We might have then gone for just 1.024, and you'd have found that that would have given you the answer pretty much bang on. So there's two different ways of doing it. This is obviously the rearrangement way. So one, obviously, to make some notes on there. Uh, and obviously figuring out how you do your square roots and your cube roots on your calculator, or potentially a fourth root if it was for four years or something like that. Okay, but here's two to have a, for you to have a go at. Okay, so two questions, so pause the video there, have a go, we'll go over the answers in a sec. Okay, so Joe invested £6,000 for N years, and he was paid 2.5% per annum. So £6,000, let's have a look, we're going to times it by 1.025. And let's just try out some powers. So let's try out a power of four. I tend to always go for four or five here. I'm going to go higher or lower. So 6,000 times 1.025 to the power of four. And that gives us too low. We've got 6,622 pounds 
and 88p when around it. That's quite a bit lower there, 6,600, that's a good 300 pounds lower. So I'm gonna go two powers higher. I'm gonna go for six, for six years here. So 6,000 times 1.025 to the power of six. And let's see what we get back into the calculator. And we get 8958.16, there we go. So sorry, 6958.16, 6958.16. Point one six. There we go. So that's the correct one there, and that represented six years. And there we go. There's our answer for the first one. On to the second one. We've got Kayla invested three thousand pounds for three years in a savings account. She was paid X percent per annum. At the end of each, uh, at the end of the three years, she had three thousand one hundred and sixty-four pounds and ninety-three p in the account. Work out the value. So let's have a look. So three thousand times X to the power of three. And it's going to equal three thousand one hundred and sixty-four pounds and ninety-three pence. So dividing both sides by three thousand, let's see what we get for x cubed. So three one six four point nine three divided by three thousand, and we get one point zero five four nine seven. Let's have a look. Six 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 seven. There we go. So again. If we cube root that to find our value of x, let's see what we get. So cube root that, so shift and a square root for my calculator. 1.0549766667. I could have just used the answer button there, but there we go. And let's have a look. We get this 1.01, .01, so it's 1 point something percent. 7999625. There we go. So there's our little percentage in this little portion here. So that is one point and it's 7999. So that's gonna be eight that rounds up to it's 1.8%. There we go, hidden within there. There we go, so that's that rate of interest. We get 1.8% for those three years. And you can always retest it on your calculator. You can do 3,000 pounds, which I'm gonna type in now, times 1.018 to the power of three and you get 3,164 pounds and 93p to the nearest penny. And if you actually type that in, you can see why our answer is slightly having to be rounded there, because it's actually 93p and then there's 3496 afterwards, so it has been rounded to the nearest penny. But there we go. Right, that's pretty much everything. I've got one more last question for you to have a look at before we finish. Okay, so this question is ever so slightly different. It's just a slightly different step in the first step here. Um, but I would actually uh, say that pause the video, have a go, see what you get for this one. And we're going to go over the answer in a sec anyway. So see what you get, see if you can get the correct answer, see how far you can get with it. And we will go over the answer in a sec if you want to pause the video there. Okay, so Sophia invested £4,000 into a savings account. We've got 2.4% interest uh, in the first year and X% percent compound interest for each year after. At the end of three years, she had £4,244.78p, and work out the value of X. So we can actually work out year one in this scenario because we know it's 2.4% in the first year. So if we go ahead and work that out, year one, we've got 4,000 multiplied by 1.024, for the 2.4%, and let's work out what that is. So 4,000 times 1.024, and that gives us 4,096 pounds. There we go. So that's what we have after year one. Now on year two, we've got 4,096 pounds, which we're gonna multiply by this X percent, and it's at the end of three years, so that's an extra two years, so the power of two, and the final figure there that we're going to get is £4,244.78. and So from this point onwards, it's the same as that last question that we were having a look at there. So we just need to divide both sides by this 4,096. So divide by 4,096. And that's going to tell us what x squared is. So x squared equals, let's type that in, 4244.78 divided by 4096. And that gives us one point. 0363-23242. There we go. Right, so don't have to do a cube root this time because it's only those additional two years. So we can square root the answer. So square root answer, and we'll get our value of x there, which comes out as 1.01. .01 
There we go. So again, we've got our percentage hidden within there. Just got to be careful on this last step that we actually get that out of it. So here's our little percentage, which is 1.8% there. It's 7,999, so that 7 is an 8. So 1.8% is the rate of interest in those additional years. There we go. Right, so that is the end of compound interest. Hope you found that useful. If you did, if it was helpful, please like, please comment, please subscribe. I'll see you for the next video. Thank you.